This year, we celebrate 50 years of Ethernet. First invented at Xerox Park, um, it's seen many, many evolutions. And we went from uh, Ethernet with 2.4 megabit per second all the way to 400 gigabit per second technology. And now they're talking about 1.6 terabit per second technology on a platform, on a, on a standard that was developed 50 years ago. Almost unbelievable. I got into this industry when we didn't even use twisted pair. We still used BNC connectors and things to build networks. It wasn't too long after that that we started to see the evolution or the start of the twisted pair Ethernet cables that, that today are so pervasive and so prevalent all over the world. Some of the stuff you've probably never seen in companies. It's hidden uh, you know, under false floors or in ceilings. But most people that I've spoken to have seen an Ethernet cable. This one just happens to be a flat cable. But what I want to talk about today is something a little bit different, not just purely Ethernet. You see, very few industries, and I'm talking about industries which are worth hundreds of billions of dollars over a long period of time, like 50 years. Very few other industries are dependent on a device that probably costs less than one or two P to make. And that is the ubiquitous what everybody refers to as the RJ45 connector, right? This one happens to be red, it's really pretty. Is there any benefit to having a red one? No, he has a lime green one, exactly the same. Most of them are just transparent uh, uh, in color. So color means absolutely nothing in this case. But very few devices in our industry, in the IT industry, have that long a uh, lifespan. One of those is a mouse. A mouse also that came out of Xerox, it has changed form over the years. Um, started off like a, like a wooden mouse um, and they used to have these kind of coated ball uh, on, on the inside and you would move your mouse, it was a mechanical mouse. It has these sensors inside that would pick up movement. And of course, every now and then you'd have to undo this, uh, this ball and wash it to take out all the fluff so that your mouse would move smoothly. And they evolved. The mouse went from two buttons to three buttons and, and the ball disappeared and it became a little laser light. And they went from touch, uh, Apple's one where you, where you have touch, electromagnetic touch on them. So there has been many evolutions of the mouse and today there are multiple mice on the market for computers uh, for computer access but the rj45 connector has remained constant the dimensions of this have remained constant hasn't changed eight wires spaced approximately one millimeter apart our company extreme networks every switch that we make must conform to those standards. If it's a switch with six ports, 12 ports, or 48 ports, if it's a switch that costs $100, or it's a switch that costs $50,000 or $100,000, it still needs to conform to this, to, to this standard, to the RJ45 standard. There are literally billions and billions of these. In fact, I did a, a search on ChatGPT and I said, how many of these have been made? And ChatGPT Chat said, je ne sais pas, I don't know. But I estimate that it must be in the tens of billions of these that have been made. So even though we call this an RJ45, technically that's incorrect. The correct name for this is the 8P8C. That's how it should be referred to. When I say it should, yes, it should, but nobody does. 8P8C connector. 
and that stands for eight position, eight contacts. Remember, eight wires. That's the proper name of this. Now, like one of those things, people started calling it the RJ45 connector. And if you go online and you try and buy these, you might find vendors that sell them and refer to this as 8P8C, but in general, everybody refers to them as the RJ45. Now, what does RJ45 actually stand for? That means it's a standard, a communication standard called, and it stands for Registered Jack 45. This is not the first of the designs and no one really knows the individual because there wasn't a single person that designed this whole thing. This was designed by committee. It's one of those few things that was designed by committee that actually really came out well. And it also shows the value of international standards, how the entire world adopted this particular standard. So nobody really knows how it was connected, but um, there was another one that many people will be familiar with. It looked exactly like this, but it was narrower. It was called the RJ11. We had them a lot in South Africa and they were used for telephones. That's what telephone plugs, uh, wall plugs, and on the actual handset, they had the RJ11 uh, connector. So the telecoms industry was so big, so massive, that people just started refer to that as Radio Jack 45. Now, if you take you know, a, a, an extender, something like this. One of the characteristics of this is when you plug it in, you will hear this little click, which you can probably pick up on the microphone over here. Ah, that's how you know you had a good solid connection. And interestingly enough, you'll see these ones over here have these little plastic lugs on top of them to protect that little lip because the most common defect you see on these is when people pull them out they just pull them out without enough care and this little lip breaks this little clip breaks over here and if you want to know where a lot of troubleshooting issues happen on networks always go to your network point and give it a slight tug if it comes out check whether this piece is broken or not if it is just replace it get a new one because it's never reliable to just leave it in the socket without that clip, without that sound. I hope this has been useful. I hope you've learned something about the 8P, 8C uh, connector, probably the most used connector in the entire world. RJ45, we respect you.